transcended the very concept of energy to matter in this very century. While it's claimed that there were many others who developed this equation of E is equal to mc square, sure, but it was he who was bold enough to proclaim and say that each piece of matter, each speck of matter in the world, it is constituted of energy. Such is going to be the repercussions of this invention of the Palma on which I came to know in the year 1977. I say so with the conviction because I then, having learned at that time, was already walking on a theory which in fact is space dynamics. Now as we all know that today we do not have such literature at least in the body of accepted physical knowledge which we can take and say that let's apply this equation, let's apply this relationship and see if really power is coming out of the vacuum. That does not mean that the present scientific knowledge is wrong. Never in the history of science any theory was totally wrong. And never shall a theory shall be never shall a theory will be totally wrong in future. Because the very process of gaining knowledge and the evolution of the scientific theories are such that human mind works and there are certain moral aspects in the inventors and there is certain guidance and intuition that he may err in some portions but not at all and never in all portions. So it's a tough job but for me fortunately it became very very easy because in the year 1977 having struggled out of pure interest not at all out of professional needs determined to make a model of electron which makes me understand what electronic charge is the first thing which a student of electrical engineering needs to know that led to a question why not also ask what electronic mass is and so on and so forth the available literature goes up to a certain point gives you the value derived by experimental results Coulombs gives us the equations and the concepts grow from time to time it was just not possible out of the available literature to say that mass is such and such why its quantity is such and such why charge such and such? What in fact is the electronic structure? Does the electrostatic field of the electron vary continuously in space? Does it go all the way to its center or stop somewhere? Sure, experiments have so far not given us that much of knowledge and perhaps they may not because we are really dealing with sub-quantum entities. So such was the situation and that led me to the theory of which the brief conceptual part alone I would be able to talk and catch, surely not the full mathematics of it, and had succeeded to a good extent, had a bit of a sympathetic um, uh, reciprocation from some professors of competence, but all the way, of course, led all by myself to develop it. It is at that time when the Palmas major in 77 or 78 May I got and I could see with clarity that here is an experiment if at all there is any meaning in the equations that I have developed in the space vortex theory come on apply it and if that is it then be bold and proclaim otherwise I don't think any physicist is going to come and give you an experiment to perform and the delicate data to make you develop your own theory so, now, before I go on the main body of the theory, I will first show you that my talk is going to be on two aspects. One is the practical aspects to support and convince me and the rest of the world that yes, young generators of the Palma do produce power in which the incremental power ratio is more than unity because you know in atomic stations where every atomic station is established with precise laboratories and data can be measured. Our own country has benefited a lot with USA and Canada 
that's all well known. So in those precise conditions and with precision measurements, there should be no ambiguity on the measurement. Secondly, it's such a blatant denial of the present convention of some of the laws of physics that you get powers in kilowatts, you get currents in thousands of amperes. It is not a degree and a minute of deviation of your star light. Or it is not changing instruments in micro amperes and million amperes. No, far, far from it. Which electrical engineer has seen 5000 amperes of current flowing out at 1.5 volts? Especially in a phenomena in which there is absolutely no relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor. All our life we have studied the various laws in which such a blatant uh, a challenge to man, to science, that for 150 years we perhaps didn't notice those beautiful writings of Faraday in which with a simple experiment was De Palma projected yesterday lies the whole truth and the truth which was to bring an event in the development and evolution of science which as I predict would show it for itself a change, a drastic change for the better. I'll first show you the slides so that you know, you see the machine since you have already seen the machines of yesterday, I will just spend very little time and go over the theory. Please show the slide number one. This is a machine which, after making certain improvement, having got almost every information from Roche de Palma, and I don't know how many times I have to thank him, and apply my own mind for the betterment of it, and improvement of it, is the fourth machine on which I am getting out tests. Let me clarify this aspect, gentlemen, that, uh, and gentlemen, that it is not at all my professional job. It is just purely a kind of a research in addition to that as a hobby thing. So it is not a thing sponsored by the Atomic Energy Department. No. I am free to perform and that's what it's been done. Now this is a machine in which I have also added the Faraday motor which uh, Dipalma mentioned. Just to ensure that whether this principle is going to work or not. This is only the magnetic circuit. There is a copper disc. And I am using copper and carbon brushes. With a view that, if at all I use mercury, perhaps it would be for much higher ampere ratings. Or potassium, sodium, eutectic, which uh, Trumley is using. On the smaller machine, sorry, with a view, with a view to develop 10 kilowatt, 15 kilowatt, could, could be, which could be used by, uh, could be used in the villages, these type of brushes, I find they are better. This is the generator part of it, and here, power is being tapped from the center. Now, I want to tell here, without going more into details, it's exactly the same what uh, Adam uh, uh, Bruce taught me, right? The first time I learned about it, I thought of a new method by which I could improve the ratio from 1 is to 3, 1 is to 4, to many 1 is to 10. And that is, rather than keeping the brushes here in the center, as I am presently doing, I will keep these brushes here. So that when the current is tapped, there is absolutely no magnetic field going and leading to a more traction. I just talk on it briefly sometime. Next slide please. This is just a different angle. And here it is clear. The two halves of the machine, brushes going inside, tapping power, that side the Faraday motor, this side the driving motor. Next piece, I am getting 1 is to 3 incremental power ratio. This is just the fitter and the foreman working on it just to keep the relative balance. Lights on piece. So, the improvement made already and the tests carried already give me the conviction that the moment the tabbing is being done on the top of the rotor which I have written in my first article published in Magnus in your future it gives you the possibility of increasing the incremental power ratio and the detailed experiments now make me believe that that is going to be a grand success it is therefore the test results 